This Peacock Journal is uh, the same size as the one I'm working on now. It's like six and a half by eight, somewhere in there. This was a mold and white polymer clay, and then I embedded the uh, turquoise rhinestones in it. And um, I made the little, well, actually the hole was there in the mold. But then I baked the rhinestones in the clay and then took them out after it was baked and super glued them in. These are rubber stamps and mica powders. And these are canes from Ivy Niles. This is the peacock cane. And I, I don't want to show you how to do stuff as much as tips and tricks on how to make a general journal cover and what you need and some some of the tips that I use on doing it and some of the products that I use. Um, you can do anything on a journal cover. This one is the same as the Peacock one. It is a faux leather. And I think I got this off of Amazon too, but that's the one I actually have two covers working on this size with. The thing that you'll need is a baking pan of some sort. This is a small one that came from a toaster oven that I no longer use. And then when you um, do your journal cover, you lay it down on a piece of parchment paper. You lay another piece of parchment paper over top of it. And then you lay a ceramic tile top side down on it. And that will hold it down while it's baking to keep it flat. Don't forget to use your oven thermometer when you bake polymer clay. Check on your temperature. Just don't put this oven thermometer in the oven and say, well, it looks good to me. Ovens fluctuate. I don't care if it's a kitchen oven or toaster oven or whatever oven you're using. The small ones have more of a tendency to fluctuate and spike in their heating and cooling. So make sure that you have at least one outside thermometer other than your oven thermometer that you use and keep an eye on it. And to get it to bake at 275 Fahrenheit for Primo Clay, you may have to set your oven on 400 to get it to hold that 275 temperature. You may have to lower it down to 225. It just depends on your oven. Some of the questions I hear is how much clay does it take to do that project? This is Primo White. It's just regular white. I just rolled it out to get a size on my journal to see how much clay it would take. And this is one complete bar of two ounces. Three ounces of clay. But you just keep rolling it out. And when you roll out your clay to condition it, set it in a rectangle. Start with the shape you want to end with. And it's easier to run through there. I have an Atlas 180. It's this width. So it's wide enough for me to run the whole sheet through. And I'll show you a little bit later on about the Skinner blends I used. Uh, some of the products that I used on these is silk screening. Uh, these pink ones are from Tanya's Treasures. And I guess you have seen now that I'm doing an under the sea theme, which I do quite often. Um, I love the sea and the seashore and under the sea. This is a Christy Friesen one that I'm going to be using as well. So we'll set those aside and have a bottle, a bowl of soapy warm water. So when you finish with your silk screen, you can instantly put it in there. And I'll silk screen this little scrap. This was my Skinner blend. I cut the light off of it. This is the sand. This is my ocean. And this is going to be an ink pen to match this set. 
other products you can use these are embossing powders I've heard a lot of questions recently about embossing powders these are totally different than mica powders they emboss a little bit on polymer clay not like they do on a card stock with greeting cards but you can use a heat gun but you can also put it in the oven which is what I'm doing on these projects right now with the journal covers and I want to show you a lamps a um, switch plate cover I did and put the embossing powders on it a couple of years ago to show you the difference between that and your mica powders your mica powders as you well know are really glossy they're sparkly they're shining I've got the coppers and the golds you can use the mica powders with silk screen they're a really fine powder and they don't clog up your silk screens but I've never embossed on a silk screen because I don't want to take the chance of it clogging up my silk screen these are metallic acrylic paints you can use acrylic paints you can use the different colors the name brands aren't important as much as just make sure they're water-based acrylic paints you also can use lumineers which is a halo effect with most of these they also are an acrylic paint water-based product and you can use these with your silk screens you can use pastel chalks um, it doesn't have to be just a one colored silk screen out of um, acrylic paint when you go to bake your journal covers or anything and you've got your tray there and your polymer clay is ready to bake I cover mine completely with a piece of foil and that way it's less chance of it burning or scorching this little mermaid's not hooked down this is a mold she's been baked and when I first baked her her little arm distorted from the mold so I've reshaped the arm with translucent and I'm going to go back and um, bake it again and I've used Lumineers paint on this one and um, some acrylic flesh tone colors for her skin so I'll go back and repaint her skin and her arm but I just wanted to show you uh, how I put her on here this one is silk screened with different silk screens and my object in these were to show depth so everything that was in the far back is in black and then the different colors um, the lighter ones come forward in art you know everything that's dark goes backwards everything that's light comes forward these are filled in silk screens with mica powders and uh, the Lumineers paints they have re real seashells on them little tiny seashells and I'll show you how I added those and then I marked out after I silk screen this where this mermaid was going to go with a toothpick and just marked it out on my clay before it's baked so I can see where it's going to go I still have some work to do on this one and there was parts of this Skinner blend that I liked and parts that I didn't so I redid the, silk, the Skinner blend and when I did that I added some mocha souffle clay and some primo gold metallic and got more of a darker sandy color going in the background where I did this one with a darker blue and less sandy color at the bottom I like this um, Skinner blend better and this one has the same mermaid on the mold she's not baked she was added on to um, the background with bacon bond 
that's raw clay to raw clay and this will adhere those two together my little fish have been banked my starfish my little coral the little starfish here all of those are a Christie freezing mold and they are they were done with either the Lumineers acrylic paint or the um, mica powders they were baked and they were put on as well as the shells with translucent liquid clay which is holding baked clay to raw clay it's a whole lot thinner than the bacon bar and then I silk screened the different colors the little fish and um, the seahorses and did them in different colors just to show it up now this sparkly stuff that you see up here that is embossing powders and I just sprinkled it on lightly sprinkled some in here and down here and I used embossing powders in that light clay and mixed it and it looks stone like or sand like so I put the clay raw clay down on raw clay and I pushed it in so it would hold and then I'm going to take my translucent liquid clay and I just put a line on there and I'm going to take my little seashells And I'm going to press them into this clay and that way they'll bake on there and they'll have a way to hold and uh, these little seashells can be baked And I'm not spending too much time on this. I'm just trying to give you tips and little tricks that I do. So, um, you can, I mean, you can do this with any theme. It doesn't have to be under the sea. This mermaid is not baked. So she has bacon bond on the back of her. And she is on the raw clay. And I took the shells and the raw clay and made my little sandy pile um, and hooked it to the bottom of her tail and then pushed these seashells in the bottom of that tail first off I'm going to take Christy Friesen's and remember this is going to be my ink pen I'll press it down make sure it adheres to all of my clay And I think we'll see if I can get some of this white out of here and do my main one in white. And my little trick to my silk screening is take a credit card and cut it up into sizes. So when you get to these little tiny shapes and you want that shell right there in one particular spot, then you use this little piece of credit card and silk screen it on there. I'll show you in just a minute. You know what? Let's do this in bright yellow. And I use the rounded side of my credit card. I don't use the side that I just cut. And I have a baby wipe or paper towel or a little damp cloth to clean off my credit card with it doesn't take a lot of paint to silk screen 
even with doing a whole silk screen this size, I have a little bit more control over where I'm going, what part of the silk screen I'm using, and particularly not getting the name of the person that made the silk screen in the silk screen. And you just go back and forth over it until you're sure that it's gone through your silk screen. You gently raise it up. Put your silk screen in your bowl of water instantly. Silk screens are a little bit more durable than what I think people think they are. So they can withstand a lot but when it comes to cleaning. But um, they, uh, they need to be put in water instantly. Do some of these corals in silver. Your silk screens do not take too long to dry at all because your paint is so thin on there, but you don't want to put a silk screen over top of wet paint. This is the Sculpey Silver and Gold acrylic paints that comes in your silk screening kit from Sculpey. And this is a really cool metallic. It actually shows up some. So if I want this little coral right here, I can use this piece of the credit card. I can put a little bit of paint on there and see how little bit of silver paint that I have. Let's put this right here. When you're silk screening, make sure you can actually read the name of the company that made it, Tanya's Treasures. And that way you know you have it facing the right way down. Some of them have a glossy side and some of them have just a matte finish. And uh, I can't see that one too well because of my paint color. Okay, let me try this one. Let's do a bright fuchsia. This is pearl magenta. This is lumineers and it's a halo. So, let's see if we can get this one to show up right there. That's a little smaller one. Let me put a little bit of the magenta on there. This is thinner. You can see that it came out quicker and it's going to run a little bit. Let's see if this one will go right there. And once I get these glazed or coated with something you'll be able to see them better. I can't get that up without ripping it. Just put a little bit of black on it and now as this is drying I can see it. I don't know if the camera is picking it up. I can see the silver and I can see the magenta. Let's put a big black fish going across here. Let's make sure I've got it. And I'm silk screening right over top of a silk screen. And just layer them up. Now you can see that one better. And since you can see the black ones, let's do another black one. Let's do um, let's, let's put a little jellyfish right here. There we go, we got a jellyfish underneath the fish. Let's put a copper. Just 
Just put a little bit of mica powder. This is super copper. And it's Pearl X brand. And I can see that, but I don't know if you can. It will show up once that these, actually these will prop, the pen will have deep shine on it from Tiny Pandora. It's mica powders, pastel chalk, and embossing powders. I can't think of anything else right off. They need to be burnished on. You can take a piece of parchment paper, put over your mica powder, and I use this nifty little tool, and it is from uh, Nora's store has a flat bottom. It's a wonderful burnishing tool. The best one I've seen. And that just puts your mica powders in your clay a little bit more. Now let's take some this is embossing powder glitter. We'll take a little bit of that and just want to put a little bit in my hand because I don't want this to go in clumps because if you put it on in clumps it will bake in clumps just put a little bit of sprinkles on just to give it that little sparkle and shine and when that's baked it will raise up slightly And I'm going to lay my paper back down and burnish that on so it will stay on the clay while it's baking. It doesn't take a lot to burnish these things on. Okay, right now I'm going to head to the oven with all of these. Uh, most of this is done, well all of this is done with Primo with maybe a little bit of souffle uh, added in. I'm going to bake it at 275 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to bake it uh, for 30 minutes and that's mainly because of this raw mermaid. If everything else was that thin I may only bake it for 20 minutes, but I'm going to give her 30 or 35 minutes to cure, but she's a solid piece there. So we'll come back after all these are done, and I'll show you how I attach them to my journal with well bond glue. So we will come back in a little while. Okay, one of the things, this is another journal cover I made out of crazy things. And it's for my hop keeping. And I just put together some different things that, you know, we do in hop. This is the uh, Makume Game. This is just translucent clay with um, run through the pasta machine with a texture sheet. And then I did mica powders on top of it. I stenciled in hop and gold and then offset hop in the green. All of these are made from scraps and um, here's my frying pan challenge and that's my little pond frying pan and I left the frog and this makumegame down here so I can show you what I use when I'm not going to use a UV light. And this is Sculpey Clear Liquid Clay. And it gives you a shine almost as good as resin. But it doesn't take a UV light to use it. This is not the regular TLS, Translucent Liquid Sculpey. It has a shine to it as well when used as a top coat but not like this does. This is a really clear 
glassy looking shine. And this is called TLS. Sculpey Clear Liquid Clay. We'll brush it on just with a regular paintbrush. I'm going to make sure that it's in my little grooves and nicks and crannies without building up. I'm going to pull that build up out of there. And there's two ways you can set this and cure it. You can put it back in your oven at 300, 325 degrees for say 10 or 15 minutes and bake it on. Or you can do what I'm going to do and that's use a heat gun to set it. Now when you're using a heat gun to set it, you've got to be really careful that you don't burn it because your heat guns can get hot. My uh, heat gun is relatively inexpensive. It only has one speed on it. It's called the Darcy heat gun and I think I got this off of Amazon. Now watch the glaze here as I, now it looks wet. I'm going to put the heat to it, keep my heat gun moving, and eventually in a minute it's going to go foggy looking. Sort of like a frosted glass. I let my heat gun heat up, I didn't preheat it. But once the fog look is taken away, it gets really, really shiny, and you actually can see the fog looking mist disappear as it becomes shiny. So once it gets to the foggy stage, I'll bring it up a little bit closer and let you see that. And like I said, you don't want it to build up in those little nooks and crannies so much. It is clear. It will dry clear, but it will still gap in those little places. Just keep your heat gun moving all the time. Keep it, I don't know, two or three inches away from it. This will, the clay will get soft once it's heated. And then as it cools back down, it will, as it cools back down, it will become strong and hard again. Now see, you can see the foggy look to it. It's not near as crystal clear as this is. This is just real foggy. Now, let me see if I can hold it and put the heat gun to it so you can watch it change. Now it's starting to get shinier in places. And you just keep the heat gun moving and just be careful for this get this is really getting soft now. And I set it back down on my work surface. Now it's starting to get really, really clear on my goofy frog. There we go. That's really shiny. I don't know if you can tell how shiny. And as it cools down, it will get a little bit shinier. You can tell up here where it's shinier. The frog not so much because he's translucent clay to begin with, colored with a little bit of alcohol inks. So I'm going to let that cool down for just a second because I want to attach it to this notebook. Now I promised you earlier to show you a light switch cover because I want to show you the differences in mica powders and the uh, Lumineers paint and the embossing powders. The background is just clay and it's a Skinner blend. This goes in my entry hall which is Oriental. The stencil is a Cherry Blossom and that was done with Lumineers paints. The stencils were done with Lumineers paints. And that's just a little cardboard stencil. And some of the other colored areas were done with mica powders. All of this white blobs of stuff, and that's the way I wanted it, uh, is embossing powders. 
So, like I said earlier in the video, they don't react the same way on clay as they do on cardstock. So, these are the... Let me set that there. These are the journal covers after they're baked. And you can see the little white spritzy type sparkles. That was that sparkle embossing powder that I put on there towards the end. And you can tell the difference. This, you can still feel it. It still stands up. But it's not all globby like that is. So when you're putting on your embossing powders, make sure you either want a glob or you want sprinkles because there's no taking it off after you put it on. And this mermaid uh, is the one that I baked on there. She was raw clay when I put her on. This one I haven't completed the mermaid yet. I did bake her and I'm in the process of painting her. And I will put her on. I'm going to use the well bond glue to glue her on since it's baked clay on baked clay and it's going to be a finished product. The only reason I haven't put one of these on this journal yet is because I'm not sure what finish I'm going to put on them. I want something shiny. The Sculpey Clear liquid clay like I just used on here or Deep Shine which is uh, a UV finish resin and it's a brush on and it sold at tinypandora.com you can see here the difference in the embossing powders even between the two underwater scenes I wanted these to look like little coral flowers growing on the ends of these little tree branches rather than just have the sprinkles on there just to add some texture and a little bit of color so let me get on this one should be cool enough down here this one's cool enough to put on and get everything out of the way here and I use the well bond glue you can bake it you can use it on raw clay, you can use it on baked clay, you can put it in the oven and, and bake things together, or you can use it to glue things together, like I'm getting ready to do here. So it's like an Elmer's glue, only it's thicker, and I think it's stronger. It holds polymer clay to metal. Um, I still wouldn't advise putting stud earrings on with this, but I have used it on hair breadths and put the well bond glue on the hair breadths and then put the clay on there, raw clay actually, and baked them together and they've stayed. This is a little wooden I actually found at Walmart, I think it was last Christmas, in the strangest place. It was in the Christmas decorations, but it's sort of like a little pointed popsicle um, we'll get this out as smooth as I can.
to help weight them down while they dry. I want to make sure that they're dry, so I let them set. I've even let them set overnight, but I would normally let them set at least four to six hours before I move them to make sure that they're dry. See, I did cut these out up here at the spiral, which normally I don't. But with this one, I decided to. Just gonna slide the clay up in place. Press it down really well. The glue also dries clear. big one. This is how I attach them all to the journal. And if you think about it, a journal cover is nothing more than a huge, or maybe not so huge, uh, light switch cover. So, you know, when you think how easy it is to do a light switch cover, think how easy it is to do a journal cover. So I hope you've learned something and enjoyed some tips and tricks along the way. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.